my NFL season predictions. This video is extremely important. You must hear my opinion because I have done millions of hours of research, watched countless hours of film, dug into the depths of every single depth chart. I'm gonna start with the awards, go to the standings, and then my Super Bowl winner at the end of the video. I don't wanna just be sitting here all video. Let's start moving around. Let's talk some pigskin. Offensive player of the year. To be honest, I think this award comes down to three players and three players only. And if it's not any of these three players, then I just don't know ball. I don't know what I'm talking about. You can click off this video. The first player is Mr. Jefferson. Justin J. Jettas. You know what I mean? The Jefferson. Just the best receiver in the NFL right now. Like, I think that makes you a favorite for Offensive Player of the Year. But he won it last year. So I, I don't know. I'm not really going to go that way. But the next contender is none other than my guy, Christian McCaffrey. Get the Oreos out. Get the Oreos out. My only concern is, like, if he snaps a hamstring because he wears red and gold, you know? Like, the chances of that just tripled but he's definitely a contender but my prediction my winner is none other than jamar chase from the cincinnati bank defensive rookie of the year will anderson i think he's the current favorite to win based on betting odds and you know if you're chinese like me you like odds you know um i just think he's the best defense player in this draft i also think it's just a process of elimination the only guy that he's really up against in my opinion is jalen carter and like you know he's got to drive to games you know what I mean? If he gets a driver, all right, a chauffeur, Jalen Carter's gonna win it. But I don't think he's gonna do that. So I got Will Anderson. Offensive rookie of the year. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing with this camera, by the way. I'm kind of just moving camera angles. Right now, you guys are just between my legs. This one is just a crapshoot. I think the clear favorite is Bijan Robinson. Um, I don't think he's gonna win it because uh, he's an Atlanta Falcon. Arthur Smith is just like, I feel like you can confuse him with like a meth head. Like he's, he, He's special, like special, not in a good way. He made Kyle Pitts look like Marquise Lee on a bad day. All season long. Like, it is disgusting. I think they're going to ruin Bijan, to be honest. Other contenders like Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, these are all good picks. You got receivers like Quentin Johnston from the Chargers, Jordan Addison from the Vikings. You know what I mean? You got all these names. But my pick for Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jameer Gibbs. Studying his film. He reminds me a lot of Alvin Kamara. I don't know if it's because he also has that like piece of tape on his arm. I think it's to prevent like the turf from hurting their arms. But I feel like when a running back puts that like white piece of tape on, they just get a plus five boost in agility and shiftiness. Jameer Gibbs is also very intriguing because he plays on the Lions. And the Lions, I heard, are just putting him everywhere. Like they're putting him as a receiver, running back. He might even need to step in for Jared Goff. I don't know. And so I got Jameer Gibbs winning it. I do think the Lions are going to be pretty good as well this year. That's coming up later on in the video. Defensive player of the year. It's usually a pass rusher. All right. So, you know, Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett, uh, Aaron Donald, TJ Watt, right? These guys start coming to mind. Micah Parsons. But I'm going with Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner. I think he has the marketing. Schematically, okay, the Jets are a really good defense. Coached by a very good defensive head coach who has a very good defensive philosophy and a very good defensive scheme, which is influenced by the former team that he was employed under. The Jets have a very good defense, all right? Particularly their pass rush, which I think benefits the DBs. They'll be scoring more points on offense right now, which gives Sauce more chances to actually get PBUs and interceptions because other teams will be playing from behind. They'll be throwing the ball more. And back to the marketing point. I, I just think with hard knocks coming around, you get the Sauce nickname, Get the chain, you know what I mean? Just the whole swagger. I, 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 I can't believe I used that word. Coach of the year, I got Sean Payton. I think the Denver Broncos are gonna be a really good football team this year, but we'll get into that later on in the video. I did wanna go Robert Sala actually for this award. I do think the Jets are gonna be a really good football team. Uh, the only problem with predicting Robert Sala is the history of the Coach of the Year award. You know, we've had Brian Dable win it, Mike Vrabel, uh, Kevin Stefanski, John Harbaugh, Matt Nagy. I think Jason Garrett won it recently. You know what I mean? See where I'm going with this? Last award, the Holy Grail, the big boy. 
MVP. Now, I could just cop out, go with the boring answer. Mahomes. You know what I mean? Josh Allen. But you know what? I don't think it's going to be any of those big guys. I think it's going to be a dark horse this year. I have a strange feeling that this year's MVP is going to be Trevor Lawrence from the Jacksonville Jaguars. The woman. I get fooled very easily, okay? I get moved very easily. I, I, I get influenced very easily. I saw Calvin Ridley run a route after, uh, I think it was like Zay Jones or somebody random. And bro looked like he was on three times speed. Then I saw this other video of him cutting. Like he looks like Lamar Jackson. I also do think the Jaguars are going to be a good team as well. Get into that after this. Trevor Lawrence got a good shot at winning MVP. Okay, now standings. This is where it gets interesting. So last year's predictions video for standings, uh, mathematically, the video did not make sense. And once again, I'm Chinese. It's got to make sense mathematically, all right? The numbers have to be right. So what I did for this year is I picked the winner and loser for every single NFL regular season and playoff game. I'm a loser. I know, but I, I did it. AFC West. All right, I got the Chiefs going 14 and 3, the Broncos going 12 and 5, the Chargers going 7 and 10, and the Raiders going 4 and 13. Now, I know I shouldn't be basing things off of history or personal bias, but as a 49ers fan who picked the Raiders to win the division last year, I was awfully disappointed. I forgot that Josh McDaniel should be at McDonald's. I, I just forgot. I think Devontae Adams gets traded by the deadline because Aaron Rodgers just reconstructed his contract and he mentioned in an interview that he did that in order to get somebody at the trade deadline. Chargers 7-10. and 10. The AFC's just stacked this year. You know what I mean? There's a lot of good teams in the AFC. It's really hard to pick one that just kind of squeaks out, but I don't think the Chargers are going to do it this year. I know they got a great quarterback, all right? And generally speaking, great quarterbacks... Don't go 7-10. I just feel like retaining Staley has a negative impact on the team. Bro can't read the clock. Uh, he just doesn't know how to use his timeouts. You know, the Chargers just always seem to be really, really hyped up on paper. They have all these names, these big names. Yeah, I got them 7-10. and 10, And that's partly because of how stacked this division is. Broncos Nation. Let's rock. <laughs> to me, Denver has the same star power and names as the Chargers. The difference is just structure. This defense is very, very good. The offense surely improves from last year. There's a lot of space for improvement. You know, you got Sean Payton, one of the best offensive head coaches of all time, and you had Nathaniel Hack, the worst head coach of all time. Urban Meyer, Nathaniel Hackett, they're battling, they're tussling. Buffalo Bills, 13-4. and four. Now, after I finished doing all the games, I thought the Bills would actually have a worse record than this. I was thinking maybe like an 11-6 and six situation, but I guess their schedule is just pretty easy, you know? Because there were a lot of games that I picked there where I'm like, okay, yeah, surely the Bills win this. If they have all their bodies, yeah, surely they win this. Yeah, they're going to be in. Don't really need to talk about that. Dolphins, Jets. I have them both at 11-6, and 3-3 three and three in their division. The Jets, I think the Jets are going to be good this year, man. I really do. Because like I said earlier in the video, the defense is really good. They had the offensive rookie and defensive rookie of the year. I think they're acquiring Devontae Adams at the trade deadline. I really do. I feel like it's another situation like Hackett from Peyton, Wilson to Aaron Rodgers, and then Patriots at 6-11. and 11. You're losing five of those games. Bill's going to squeeze out one, right? But Bill can only do as much as he can. He's not a player. He's a coach. AFC North statistically is the most competitive division. I have all four teams with a winning record over 500. Bengals, 12 and five, Super Bowl contender, franchise quarterback. You got one of the best receivers in the NFL. Zach Taylor's kind of shit, but you got the talent to cover for that. I think the Bengals are gonna be really, really good. Again, 12 and five. Ravens at 12 and five. Hallelujah, Lamar Jackson finally has receiving weapons. Now, whether or not Odell can get through an entire game, who knows? I'm praying for that man's knees because when healthy, he is still, without a doubt, one of the most electric wide receivers. And they got Zay Flowers out of Boston College out of the draft this year, who I think is probably the best receiving prospect in this draft. John Harbaugh is always running a steady ship. I think they're going to do just fine. I got the Ravens going pretty far in the playoffs too. We'll get into that later. Steelers and Browns at 9-8. and eight. I think this is just a result of 
having two really, really, really good teams in the division. Steelers, I got them going two and four in the division. Browns, I got them going one and five. There's just more uncertainty with these teams compared to the others. Wow, I'm talking, I'm talking pigskin right now. I am really serious. I'm so dialed in in this video. Y'all realize that? I don't think I've been this locked in for like a video discussion. This is kind of, this is sick. I'm just not a fan of Kenny Pickett. There's something about him that there's no, there's no energy. There's no like aura like they have good offensive weapons Deontay Johnson one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL George Pickens who I think could be a star right Najee Harris at running back but like I said it's a really tough division and it's a really tough conference you're gonna have to leave a lot of good teams out of it and so I don't think the Steelers are gonna make the playoffs I think it's really hard to talk about the Browns because Deshaun Watson is supposed to be really really good now I don't want to speak too much on the guy because you know but football wise pig skin wise he's a he's a very good quarterback he is. He sucked last year, but but he's still a very, very good quarterback. Tough division. Just just way too tough. You got to squeeze out some teams. But that's why I have all four of them at over 500. You know what I mean? All with a winning record. Last division in the AFC. Uh, probably the worst division. Jaguars 11 and 6. Texans 8 and 9. Colts 7 and 10. Titans 6 and 11. I think the Jaguars are the best team in the division. I got Trevor Lawrence as my MVP because of this. Texans and Colts both have a rookie quarterback. I think Anthony Richardson might actually pan out better than CJ Stroud, but they're both rookies. I can't put too much stock into them being better than the Jaguars, but I can put a lot of stock into them being better than Ryan Tannehill. That's the one thing I can do. The Titans have no quarterback, and you're not going to win in this league without a quarterback. No matter how good your head coach, no matter how good your running back, no matter how good your defense, you can't win in this league without a solid quarterback now let's move over to the nfc this might be the worst football division to ever grace planet earth i have the saints winning the division at 6 and 11 the falcons finishing second at 4 12 and 1 that's right i predicted a tie the panthers at 4 and 13 and the Buccaneers at 4-13. and 13. Now, the interesting thing about this, I actually thought going into this game-by-game -game predictor before doing this, I had the Panthers as the division winner. And I think the Panthers can easily win this division because, I mean, I have the division leader at 6-11. and 11. Like, come on, we can get 7-10. and 10. Bryce Young with all those additions, right? Adam Thielen there as well. They got the brand new head coach. They got the whole new energy coming in, you know, all that stuff. And the Buccaneers got Baker Mayfield battling Kyle Trask. I don't know what Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are doing there. Like, I think that they're just enjoying Florida and just kind of taking it off. also don't think Todd Bowles is that good of a head coach. 4-13. and 13. The Falcons, now if I didn't have them tying that game, they could literally be last in this division, but the tie separates them from the rest. And the Saints is the winner. I just think they're the most competent team. Alvin Kamara suspended three games. I don't think that's going to change much, to be honest, but I'm not a big believer in Derek Carr. I don't think he's that good of a quarterback. So 6-11 and 11 is where I have them. I see, like, I have them going 3-3 three and three in the division. You know what I mean? This, this division's a toss-up. NFC North. I have the Lions winning the division at 10-7, and seven, Vikings at 10-7, and seven, Bears at at 8 and 9 and the Packers at 6 and 11. There's a lot of high expectations for the Lions and honestly rightly so. They got a very good roster. Dan Campbell, I honestly I'd run through a wall. I'd lick an ass for him. Like that that's just the type of motivator he is. Vikings at 10 and 7. We're back to structure. Kevin O'Connell, great head coach. You got the usual Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins. I don't think they'll miss Adam Thielen as much because I think Jordan Addison's a very good plug and play kind of guy interesting to see their running back situation though now without Dalvin Cook I think Madison gets to start am I right am I wrong Vikings fans that's what I think is gonna happen Vikings are just one of those teams right now that are just middle of the pack I don't think they're going anywhere they're not gonna win the Super Bowl they're good enough to make the playoffs it's just a weird spot to be in as a football team Bears eight and nine I, I'm a big fan of Justin Fields I think a lot of people discredit Justin Fields either really believe in like the Ohio State quarterback not working out well or um, the racist. Uh, that, that's just my opinion. Now that he's got DJ Moore as well, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool. That's a very, very nice wide receiver trio that's surrounded around him. Cole Komet as well. Great tight end. Interesting to see how they do with uh, Khalil Herbert. I, I think he's a really good running back, actually. He did really well for me on my fantasy football team last year. I just think that they're still in the middle of a rebuild, which is why I don't have them, you know, making the playoffs, making a playoff run, doing all that stuff. Eight and nine, I think, suits right for the Chicago Bears. And last but not least, the Packers. I think they'll feel the impact of Aaron Rodgers leaving. Now, I do think it'll be hilarious. It'll be really, really funny if Jordan Love is insane. And the Packers are just back immediately. Despite Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers and 
all these guys leaving. They're just back. NFC East. Eagles winning the division 13-4. and four. I got the Giants second at 9-8. and eight. That's right, Cowboys fans. Y'all are third at 9-8 and eight as well. Okay, y'all still got a winning record, which leaves the fourth spot to the Commanders. I don't want to talk about the Eagles too much. I think we all know how good the Eagles are. They pretty much just integrated half of Georgia's team last year which won the national championship. So they just got an influx of really, really good prospects as well. The only big loss they had this offseason was Javon Hargrave. Welcome to the 49ers. Giants at 9-8. and eight. Giants made the playoffs last year. I think they'll make the playoffs again. The Saquon Barkley contract situation, I think, ruins team chemistry a little bit. You know what I mean? You know your star player, your focal point of the offense is unhappy. I do think that affects the locker room a little bit. Now, they did acquire Darren Waller. They also drafted Jalen Hyatt. Daniel Jones got paid as well. I just, I'm unsure. I think he's okay, but I, I, I'm not sold. I don't think he's a star. But they're a solid team. And uh, I think they're better than the Cowboys. Particularly better than Dak Prescott is Daniel Jones. That's why I said it. Daniel Jones is better than Dak Prescott. I've had enough of this guy. He's so average, but he has the star on his helmet, so he's made to be like a god. He sucks. He's not good. He's he's mid. I think I heard him say something about he's not going to throw like 10 plus interceptions. No, he will throw more than 10 interceptions. That's a, that's part of the predictions video. He will throw more than 10. They still got their receiving corps, but they also still have the ogre. He's never been good without Aaron Rodgers. He's washed. Yeah, I think the team's success really just predicated on how good Micah Parsons is this year. If Micah Parsons produces a defensive player of the year, which I think is possible, then Cowboys could be above the Giants for that second division spot. Washington is just an interesting team. I just don't see how their offense moves with Sam Howell as their quarterback. The enemy's first year, you know he's going to want to win. You, know, you don't want to shit the bed your first year as a head coach, but just don't see how that offense moves the ball. I think they're last in that division, but they're 8-9 and nine for a reason, right? They can compete with every team in that division. The way I'm going 4 I'm going 4-2 in the division. So, there you go. NFC West. 49ers top of the division, 13-4. and four. I got the Seahawks going 9-8. and eight. Rams, 6-11. and 11. Cardinals, 0-16. And one. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. In week 10, I think we will witness the greatest football game ever played between the Atlanta Falcons and the Arizona Cardinals. I think it'll be a tie. Score prediction, 12-12. I didn't have the Cardinals winning a single game this year. Literally, I went down the list. I went down the whole list. Went down every game. I couldn't pick them. My heart just couldn't pick them. I couldn't do it. I couldn't click on the Cardinals, but I couldn't do it. I don't know if Kyler has a knee. I don't know if Gannon's a good head coach. I saw this clip from training camp. And like I said earlier, I I'm a believer. You know what I mean? I'm very easily influenced. Uh, yeah, it just looks bad. I don't even know what the bright spot. What is the bright spot on the Cardinals? Like without searching up the Cardinals depth chart right now, name me the bright spot for the Arizona Cardinals. Let's talk about a good football team, the 49ers. Now, if you haven't watched my 49ers preview video, I suggest you go do that right now. If you want a more in-depth analysis of the team, of the roster, I don't think they lose a single game against any of these division opponents. They're better than every single one of these teams. Better coach, better personnel, better scheme, just better, right? I'm not as confident in this 49ers team as I am previous years. There's just a lot of drama, and we have two and a half old linemen. That's a problem. You play with five, you only got two and a half, that's 50%, right? Math. Seahawks at 9-8. and eight. Now, without any bias and without any, uh, you know, personal views or opinions influencing this decision, I actually think the Seahawks do have a pretty decent team. That was tough to say, man. I didn't like the fact that they picked JSN this year. I was pretty mad about it. But the reason I'm not scared of the Seahawks is because I don't feel like their secondary is as good as advertised. I'm not really big on any of their corners except for maybe Witherspoon. Personally, I think Tariq Woolen's overrated. Opposite of that, who do they have? Kobe Bryant? Or is it Michael Jackson? I don't know too much about those guys either. I think you spend a fifth overall pick on a nickel corner. To me, it's just kind of strange, but hey. I'm not John Schneider, right? Bobby Wagner is just old. I still don't think Geno Smith is all that. Middle tier quarterback that leans more towards the lower end of that medium tier. But with that being said, I think their O-line is decent and they have a lot of receiving and running threat. So I still think they're going to be above 500, a good team. Here are my AFC 
and NFC wildcard standings. Some notable teams that I don't think will make the playoffs. Chargers. I don't think the Jets make it. Actually, you know what? I might put the Jets in and I might take the Dolphins out. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. Dolphins out and I have the Seahawks not making it in the NFC, which I feel like is a pretty bold prediction But let's get into the most important part of the video AFC Champion I have the Baltimore Ravens winning the AFC this year I'm putting it in the hands of Lamar Jackson. I think this is the year he gets it done It's tough not picking Kansas City. It's really tough. It's really hard, but going back to back I think is just a little, little tough. And I think Lamar just gets it done because he has more receiving weapons, man. That's just what he's been lacking the last couple of years. Out of the NFC, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, I picked the 49ers last year, so maybe if I pick the Eagles, yeah, the 49ers gonna make it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. I usually follow my heart, and my heart definitely says the 49ers. I'm gonna go with my brain this time. I'm gonna say the Eagles. Don't wanna say the Eagles. But to end off this video, my Super Bowl winner prediction for the 23-24 NFL season is the Baltimore Ravens. I have them winning 31-27 in the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson, Super Bowl MVP. That's my 23-24 NFL season predictions video. This video went a lot longer than I expected. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video in the comments down below. Thank you for joining me with another episode of Pigskin Talk or talking pigskin. Let me know which one y'all like better. I don't know.